<laughs> Welcome to General Admission. Today is April 4th. 4-4. Four, 4-4-4. Four, 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 four. No, I'm not hitting golf balls badly. Just telling jokes badly. Hi, Brett. Hey, next year it'll be <laughs> four four two four. Whoa. It's a lot of a lot of fours. <laughs> we get to talk about music again. We do. And I'm so excited because this was this was a, a chaotic week, but I kind of loved it. Like you kept sending me albums and like I was to the point where like I just have to like squirt Nick with a spray bottle getting to stop because my brain can't process all these new albums coming out. <laughs> It was so much. We we ended last episode with like two or three in mind. And then when albums actually come out, I then hear about them. I don't know how to hear about albums in advance. Like if a band's not on my radar, I really don't know how to find it. Usually it's just after it comes out, I'll see like a post about it somewhere and then I'll listen. I don't yeah, know how but- to get ahead of these things. Like normally I get all my dates from like Twitter because I'll see like maybe like Pitchfork or another publication. I'll be like, oh, so-and-so announced a new album and it's horror. And then I'll like be sure to like jot that, that note down on my phone. But I feel like now like Reddit's kind of becoming like the best place to find new music. Like there's things yeah. we miss that you discover on there and bring to our attention, which has been awesome. Yeah. But also it creates weeks like this <laughs> week where there's like eight. It's, <laughs> and I have to like spin the wheel pretty much. It's it's so chaotic because you we can't realistically in-depthly listen to like five albums in two no. days. <laughs> like last week was perfect. We had three and I'm pretty sure like we were, we just sat with all three of them for till we recorded on Sunday. Yeah. Right. It was Sunday. It's been a long week. <laughs> but I, I listened to a lot, <clears throat> a lot of music this week that not even new stuff. Like, so beginning of the week which would be like wednesday in terms of podcast weeks i listened to alexis on fire because i know how much you like them and they're on the avenge tour they are for at least part one yeah so i spent wednesday went to gym in the morning still going to the gym credit to me um for i put on their very first album which i'm not sure i ever listened to and it sounds like an album that I've listened to because it's just so perfectly that 2000s time period. It's very much a debut album too. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's raw and it's, you you could tell it's just like kids in the 2000s making the music that we listen to that it's, it's, it's heavy. It's screamy. It's, it's all those great things. I felt like it was, I want to say their second album, maybe like three songs in, was the first song I heard where I was like, oh, these guys, they got something here. Like, I enjoyed the first album very much, but there's a lot of albums like that by bands that just fade into obscurity. And I didn't write the track down, but it was it was two or three into the second album, I think, where they started introducing other stuff to their music. And that was a good tell that they were going to be more than just like a flash in the pan. Where's the flash? Is it in the pan or the pot? The pan. You're right. Pan. Okay. Yeah. The fire in the pan. But watch out was incredible. Like watch out and crisis are like my go-tos with them. Is that two and three or is that later? Yeah. You're right. Like accidents, like that pretty much shows like where they're going. And like Dallas gets to showcase his vocals. Yeah. Which like hooked me into him, which will later lead into our city and color discussion. Yeah. But I, those two in full, like they're just absolutely incredible albums. And I feel like they don't really get the credit they deserve here. I don't know if it's because of like Canadian <laughs> or what it is, but <laughs> <laughs> I mean Silver Scene is Canadian too, and everyone loves them, so maybe it's not that. But <laughs> I just feel like they're very under the radar and they should they kind of deserve a little more. Yeah. You can't, but then again, Canada. their third streaming vocals are pretty harsh. So that might be it too. <laughs> They're a little harsh, but I, I, I dug it. Yeah. It was this, it was fear of myself that made me odd. I, I'm pretty sure it was that song on watch out where it felt like they were dipping into some new stuff, but all this to say, 
you put um uh color color and state state city and color st city and color i keep wanting to say state <laughs> but i'll explain why i'll explain city why and state it's like you're filling out like a exactly like a credit card application <laughs> <laughs> and he said so i looked i looked up city and color and then this is days after listening to alexis on fire realized that there's the connection there i had i had no idea so that was just a little like musical like coincidence that just made me really happy because i like inadvertently did some research so i was i was looking up dallas green dallas green dallas green city and color that's how he got the name which is pretty obvious but it wasn't obvious to me so maybe not that obvious either way what a great what a great name for a great reason i think and i did i just learned that literally right this second <laughs> i never put See? that together <laughs> yeah shout out wikipedia <laughs> and that's genius right it's so good so i listened to like he had a live album and i listened to that and then i waited for the new one to come out which we can get into when we get to albums but but he was great. Um, where else have I been this week? What have you been listening to this week? Like before the new albums. So I was on a weird like blues traveler kick for a little bit. Like I was listening to their album four because like we just got done watching Poker Face a couple weeks ago, and like there's a scene in that where uh, Benjamin Bratt just speaks the lyric, the bridge of Hook, and it's like one of the funniest scenes like I've ever seen. <laughs> it's like it's such a random song, and he literally speaks this really long bridge that like is like he rushes through on the song like no one knows what he's saying there <laughs> and like he just speaks it and like you hear everything like clearly on like the song but that anyway that sent me down like a tangent of just going down the blue traveler rabbit hole which i think we're, i'm gonna kind of talk to brian a little bit tomorrow when we interview him so you know, he's a big blue traveler fan is it funny how that's like all it takes. Like you kind of hear a piece of a song in a TV show or something. And then suddenly you're, you're just hooked. listening to that band for like a couple days. <laughs> no pun intended. You're hooked. The hook <laughs> brings you back as they say. <laughs> but I didn't realize like how like jammy and like fun they are. Like I was really blown away because I, I only really know like the hits. Yeah. I was like run around and hook. Yeah. Like that whole, like I, I love that whole album. Yeah, I, I, don't, like I don't think I've listened kind to Kind of it. underrated a little bit. I I feel like people who like them really like them. Yeah, that's what I've noticed too. I, I don't know. I don't know much about them really. I know, yeah, like the two songs you mentioned. They, when I think of like 90s, I, they definitely come up. And good harmonica players. Yeah. Popper. Popper? Is that his name? Popper. I think John Popper. Popper, I think Popper Dell? Name. What did Popper Dell tell you? <laughs> I watched Pick of Destiny last night. <laughs> I forgot to mention that. <laughs> Speaking of like uh, movies, I can send you down a rabbit hole. I've been down that. I've been, what is it? I've been down that, that path before. Let me tell you something. There's no cheese at the end of that tunnel. <laughs> ben Stiller is That's so ben Stiller, good right? that. Yeah. For as many times as I've seen that, every time he pops up in the Guitar Center scene, it just surprises <laughs> he's got the crazy hair someone ring up these abcasters and he brings them to the closet <laughs> i think there's a light switch back here <laughs> oh. tim robbins is still my favorite that movie though <laughs> come over here i'm going to kill you what i'm not going over there <laughs> <I'm> not going. <laughs> going to cut off your balls and then cut off your eyes and put your balls where your eye holes are. <laughs> Dude, we could just like totally outrun this guy. <laughs> <laughs> Should we just do an episode where we try to just quote as much of the movie from memory from front to back? That'd if be we a have, fun one. If we ever get a Patreon, that should that should be one of us. <laughs> just me and you trying to run through Pick of Destiny from memory. I'm pretty sure like Kickapoo and uh Beazelbub <laughs> is covered. Like I'm hundred percent sure we'll get that those scenes down. Oh yeah. I think we've sang Basil Bub like twenty five times at least just in one semester of senior year. <laughs> and Kickapoo. And Kickapoo. Shout out Meatloaf. Yep. R.I.P. <laughs> uh what else has been going on this week? So all right, so 
I didn't know when to bring this up, but I'm just going to bring it up now. Um, I got, so I, I this is, I'm going to go to the beginning, but I'll be quick about it. I, it was my cousin's three, my cousin's three-year-old son's birthday. Shout out Wyatt. And um, I've just been buying this kid music stuff since he was born. Cause I'm trying to like incept him so I can have a drummer when he's like 15 or something. So I bought him like Fisher Price drums, Fisher Price guitar. Uh, I, I don't know what else, like a xylophone thing. I just keep getting him music stuff. And for his third birthday, I found like a Walkman type thing for kids. And it comes with little over ear headphones. And then you can press different buttons on it. That's like a guitar or or I don't know, a microphone that's more poppy. And it just like plays songs and it's like a cool little microphone. So after buying that, I guess because it's music related, I get an email from Amazon that says, because of your recent purchase, we're giving you three months of Amazon music for free if you want it. Um, click here to sign up. So I was thinking it could be fun maybe for like a month if I only use amazon music and i just don't use spotify for a month just to see what something else is like i'm all for that because i know yeah. like i had both for a while and like it obviously pissed sandra off and people thought it was a psychopath for having both <laughs> but it's pretty cool to experiment like because like obviously apple the sound is better and that's like kind of how i know that the quality is not the greatest on spotify so you might see the same thing here with amazon i'm kind of curious yeah i mean I've i'm all for that I think I've been using Spotify for over a decade now, right? Like, yeah, yeah I know nothing about Amazon that. Music, so I'm curious yeah. how that is. So it could be a little, a little experiment. Um, Do it for three free months. Why not? Yeah, I just have, I have so many playlists and things in the work on works on Spotify that like, that's the thing. Yeah, but. If I want to do it for real, I think I should not be allowed to use Spotify for the month. Be tricky. Yeah, it would be very tricky. But yeah, I would hear your do end it. of the year uh, playlist. Yeah, I'll do it. Oh, true. It's going to throw off my stats. I'll have to like use an old phone and play everything side by side on mute on Spotify. On your laptop. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I'll start that after vacation because i have to go on a flight and i don't want to worry about downloading stuff on a separate app there's enough to worry about on a trip without yeah. switching making the biggest life change you can make by switching music providers that would just be nonsense that would be that would be insane so i would keep uh, pushing for spotify to get better audio quality even though yeah. i'm not going anywhere it would be nice yeah um i saw last weekend or might even be this weekend like right now um rise against did three shows in chicago where they're from three nights in a row no repeats they should do that more often they should they should <laughs> they should come here and do that i i mean if i heard about that sooner it seems like a great excuse to do a long weekend in Chicago. But I didn't hear about it until I think it was Thursday when it started. And at that point, if I got in my car and drove right to Chicago, I still would have missed the first set because I think it's like 12 hours. I think we've had this discussion on the podcast before too. Where like when usually when they tour, they stick to the same playlist and yeah. they shouldn't knowing how deep their catalog is like it's kind of exciting to see this because maybe they'll apply this to all tours going forward maybe. i would hope so did you were you on when we saw them for the nowhere generation tour with uh census fail opened i think i was at the one before that okay it was them and who's the summer before um, was it kill switch no that was i think it was like descendants maybe or unless i'm mixing that up with it was like that was a, definitely one too. I think it was like an OG punk band. Kill Switch was like four or five years ago, I think. They did it, they toured with Kill Switch a couple times. But one of those nowhere generation tours, because they did tour that album twice, or 
I don't Human know. That, twice, right? Yeah. I don't know that I could even say they toured that album because the sh- one of those shows, if not both, they played like two songs off it. And it it's weird because usually you should be, you know, happy a band's playing their old stuff. But if you just put an album out and it's been out for a year, like play some more of those songs. Am I crazy for wanting to hear the new stuff? No, because we <laughs> loved the new album when it came right? out. The new album was great. It's just it just felt weird to me that they'd put out an album and like barely even play anything off it. But yeah, also, they don't full disclosure, I'm pe- I'm peeking through these set lists right now and I'm a little jealous of Chicago. They got oh. halfway there for the first time since twenty ten. Wow. I love that song. Yeah. Did they does it look like chronological? Like did they go album to album night to night, or is it just a big smorgasbord of rise against the big smorgasbord all three nights nice that's like a little from here a little from there but like you said no repeats wow that's sick i'm jealous anywhere but here first time since 2006 wow is that ending for the first time rumors of my demise have been greatly exaggerated for the first time since 2007 they haven't played that since 2007 one of their best songs on that album. Oh man, I love them. See, that's all it took. Now I'm gonna like be listening to them for the next couple of days. Only 15 songs each night, though. That's a little. That seems a little weak. I mean, three nights. I don't know. Like, if you're doing three nights, it sounds like you want to play a lot of music. I mean, 15. It's 45 songs across three nights, but that's still like, like when we see Foo in September, they're going to play like 30 songs probably, (laughs) which is like two Rise Again shows. (laughs) Uh, I can't wait for that. Oh, that's what else we have to talk about. I I knew there was something else. Um, The concert schedule is like filled up now. Summer has become, has went from zero to a hundred in like a week are you taking one of my skip repeats oh no am i i didn't read it i didn't read it (laughs) okay um okay okay uh i'll wait i'll just say (laughs) i'll just say we went from saying summer seems kind of empty to now there's a lot of summer i got less than jake tickets this past week they're doing hello rock view in full and they're playing it at the house of independence house of independence is like 300 person capacity venue. The rest of this tour is all at like 2000 people venues. So I don't know why they snuck that in there, but I am so glad to be going to that show. My tickets have tripled in price and I will not become part of the problem, but I do. I have a ticket right now that is spoken for, but not confirmed. Like, Vinny said he thinks he'll come. So he has dibs right now. But if he doesn't, I will go with you. Okay. Cool. <laughs> if that's where you were going with that. <laughs> yeah. Basically. Or we can just try and see if resale balances out and get you a ticket by then. Because I feel like I was kind of late. Like I kind of missed the first sale on that one. Yeah. I don't know why. I thought you weren't in on it. I don't, because I, I don't know. I should have told you when they were going on sale. Uh, hand up. I, think I was I was fifty fifty, so yeah. I wasn't really pushing too hard. Like, there's some shows that are announced. I'm like, we have to go pre sales this day. Yeah, we have to get our tickets, <clears throat> as we'll talk about shortly. But yeah, but Hello Rock View in full should be cool. And now, like, I kind of like those album shows. I'm sure they'll play more also because that's like thirty minute album, but. It's like cheating on the set list without having to actually cheat on it. Like they're going to play that album. So now I can just listen to that album and be prepared. And I know most of it because I'm listening to this band for a long time. It's crazy going to a 20 year album anniversary. Not that I've been listening to it for 20 years, but still. Like that's how old we are now. Yeah, exactly. Um. <clears throat> What else? What else did I get? I got Screaming Females and Iron Sheik tickets, which I still think you should come to, even if they might be on another show we're going to talk about. 
Um, I think I, I think I'm going to go to that wage war show because we'll get into nothing nowhere when we do albums shortly, but I think it's like a Thursday at Starland. I don't know. I actually don't know what day of the week it is. I, I think it's middle of the week though. And I think there's too many middle of the week shows and it's like frustrating. I like them because I know I don't have plans. That's true. It's it's like mildly annoying having to drive at like rush hour after work, but I don't know. I think I think I might try and do that one. I still want to drive out to Long Island for the front bottoms, but I haven't sent out feelers on that. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to convince people to come with me, but if they have I can... to be playing the summer stage at some point. Like if you look at the August calendar right now there's like three shows and i feel like they have to fill that in soon yeah we were talking about that last night how like is this it for the summer stage right now because it seems it seems light <clears throat> and they snuck in that pixies like modest mouse show like i don't think we talked about that one no that happened this past week too um i don't know anything about the pixies other than they like influenced everyone and kurt cobain really liked them I don't think I can tell you one Pixie song. Do a little. Go listen to Do Little. Do Little? That's the album, an album? Yeah. Okay. One of the I'll weirdest things you'll ever listen to, but it's like really, really good. Nice. Yeah, that show that show is pretty tempting, but you have the the modest mouse coin flip of being one of the best shows you'll ever see or one of the worst shows you'll ever see. But they play like nothing all in between. Sides. Yeah. So that factor combined with that I don't know any Pixies doesn't make this a uh, high priority show for me. But like, if you could tell me we were going to get top tier Modest Mouse, I would probably see them every single time. Yeah. Because when it's good, it's really good. And when it's bad, it just feels like a waste of a night and money, <laughs> which is sad. Like, I think we missed out with the Lonesome Crowd of West tour. Like that would have been for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I think we were just burnt out at that point. It was end of the year. It was in the middle of the holidays. You're gearing up for like, fish at the garden. Yeah. Yeah. It just, if that happens at like any other time, I think it would have been, I don't know. We definitely fucked up. <laughs> yeah. 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 Whoops. Yeah. Um, you will get like a moon and Antarctica tour maybe. That'd be, that'd be really cool. Third planet that song stars or projectors i think that's off that Ooh, that's on there too yeah. that's that's like one of my favorite that song is so cool oh man that song is so good um also i think i want to go to fallout boy bring me the horizon because i can't stop listening to so much for stardust i know i was talking to a friend of the pod greg about that last night about how that's like a low-key really good show yeah and also it's extremely doable like i think i already have some friends going but you just get lawn tickets at pnc so you don't have to worry about like trying to get seats with your friends like if we were going to do blink or something it's just like get tickets if you want we'll chill out in the lawn like i don't care if i can't see them perfectly like i think it would just be fun to be there to hear them they're like they Never have seen them. transformed themselves. They've spent the last like 15 years becoming an arena band. So like, I want to see them in an arena. I didn't think I'd ever really care to see them. And this album pretty much completely like, way. yeah. <laughs> no, Plus, I'm but, all for but, that. I've never seen yeah. them before. And it's been a really long time since I've seen Bring Me the Horizon. Yeah, I don't know. Phenomenal. I don't think that I've ever ever seen them. Um, yeah, so I don't know the date. I don't know any details, but it's August second. Is that a Saturday? I feel like it's gotta be a Saturday. I think it is a weekend. I'm pretty sure. Let's see. Bring me the horizon has the album with the umbrella on it, right? They do, yep. Okay, yeah. I used to mix them up with someone. Oh, also this post human album is pretty good, I think. Bring the horizon. Yeah, but no, it's I I mean it might be good, but it's not what I thought it was. 
Oh, Ticketmaster says he's the worst. August 5th, it's Saturday. Yep. Cool. Um, yeah. Definitely a strong possibility. When do we have to make a call for that one, you think? Uh, I don't know. I feel like we can decide that in, like, July if we want. <clears throat> yeah. So right now, lawn tickets are 70 each. The four fees? <clears throat> I think so. Excuse me. Um, there was... Oh, uh, so Queen is touring with Adam Lambert. And I just thought it'd be fun to try and get tickets not actually get them but just like you know i'm sitting at my desk at work anyway so and i knew they were going on sale so i'm like let me just like pretend to get tickets just to see how it goes it didn't go <laughs> first of so all you're like number 2000 in line yeah first of all searching queen and they're that's what the tickets are under is at queen it might say like with adam lambert but if you search queen it pulls up Queen. It didn't give me the show. Like it said, there are no dates near North Jersey. It didn't show. It only showed like one Europe date and one other. Like it just wasn't there. So I had to go to the Queen site, click the tickets. Then it took me right back to Ticketmaster. And suddenly like I was in, which was weird. And uh, yeah, it popped me in um 2000 plus in line and i sat at that for over 15 minutes and then i just clicked out so i don't even know what tickets were going for it feels like i mean i don't want to beat a dead horse too much because we talk about this a lot but it feels like going to arena shows or just shows in yeah i guess you just call it arena shows but like msg barclays prudential things like that it just feels like it's not realistic anymore. No, nope. which is really sad. Yeah. And I have, I have a great time seeing smaller bands. Like I had a great time at microwave less than Jake is going to be awesome. Like, it's not like we can't see concerts, but if a band you like is big enough to play arenas, you just have to accept that. Like you're probably not going to get to see them. And that's really disappointing. And I don't know. I mean, obviously we blame Ticketmaster, but I don't even know what the issue, like a lot of people want to see Queen. So it makes sense that not everyone's going to be able to get tickets, but I just like, is it just a coin flip? If you happen to log in and get lucky and get tickets, you can go. Otherwise you're just a slave to like the resale market. It's like what we ran into with fish kind of. Yeah. For the December shows. Yeah. It's just, the high demand shows and there's so much tickets for resale that it really is. You, you can put the blame on bots or just people buying to flip tickets. And I think that's really like the big problem. I mean, that's not a surprise, but like, I don't know how you police that either, which is like, yeah, exactly. Like the bigger issue. It's just, I don't know. It's just, it's just disappointing. I've had friends ask me if I'm going to blink and like, things like that and i mean if i could have paid a hundred bucks to go see queen in like mediocre seats i i would do it mediocre, that would be a, yeah. a fun night you get to see a legendary band that's mostly all still there like that would be fun and it's just not it doesn't even get to be an option which is just kind of disappointing yeah but there's other shows so it is what it is. Like the Metallica tour, if my friend's uncle can hook up box seats again, like I'm going to go. Otherwise, I'm not even going to like. I mean, I might check last minute just to see if something, if people get desperate at the end, but I'm not like expecting to go. Eh. Which is yeah. sad because like I've always wanted to see them too, but they're not for like a mortgage payment. Yeah. They're they're a good one. They are worth seeing once. Yeah, but they're on the list. Even, but I don't know. If I don't even know when that tour is. I think it's August or September. One I think it months. might be August. Um. All right. I think it's time to get to albums for the week. 
Okay, so I want to start with Nothing Nowhere, a band that I have never heard of. Actually, it's not even a band, which is something that confuses me. It's just one guy. That I didn't know. Yeah, but there's... The rapper? Yeah, so I guess he was a rapper from Massachusetts. But, like, this album is... I mean, it has rap in it. It has, like, that Linkin Park kind of style without... I feel like it doesn't feel like a Linkin Park ripoff, but it's... Some of the songs are heavily, like, rap, rock screams, which is, you know, that's the formula. Um it's really good though. I got it. There is a band. Like, I don't get it. They said it's just one guy. Like, is he doing all this himself in studio and then has a band he tours with? Is it like a like a Kevin Parker, Tame and Paula type thing? Or or what? I don't I don't actually know. So whatever. But the album is great. Really scratches like that itch of heaviness which i realized this week that i've been kind of missing lately and we had it with uh that invent anime album that we listened to just like a little bit about which was also great i don't know anything about that band or where they came from it seems to be like they've been around for like a decade but they check them might out have now just created their masterpiece yeah um heavener really cool album art too um but Back to Nothing Nowhere. The whole album is great. And it has some insane features. Like that was the first thing you said to me when, because this was one of the ones that I kind of threw at you late. And you were initially like, I don't know that I have time to like work this in. And then I think you looked at the track list and the features. And You're like, I can make it work. <laughs> yeah. They got, and it was worth it. Will Ramos on the second track. Um, Silverstein, Pete Wentz. Um, Can I throw a quick yeah, question in here? Yeah. Right? So the buddy feature, a buddy from Census Fail. Yeah. Where was he in that song? I still don't know. I've listened to it like three times. It's a good question because I, <laughs> I listened to this album a few times and every time I would think like the buddy track is coming up because it would be towards the end of the album. And then I would get to the Under Oath track I'd be like, crap, I, I missed it. Like, where was he? And I don't know. Same with Pete Wentz. Unless he was the one doing the screams. Because I know he used to scream back in the day. That could be it. Because I also didn't really hear him either. So, I don't know. We got to spend some more time with it or maybe do some research. But the Silverstein track, I think. One of the best songs on here. So good. <laughs> did you look up this uh Freddy Freddy Dread? I did not know. <laughs> look him up. He's just like he's not uh what you might think this dude rapping about bitches would look like. <laughs> he's got almost 10 million monthly listeners on Spotify. Damn. Damn. He kind of looks like Bo from Superstore. I don't know if that's like a really deep cut or not, but just looks like a Midwestern that... white dude. <laughs> Bo from Superstore. That's a good one. <laughs> great show. Low key. Great show. Ba -ba -bow. It, right. That one. That was like a sneaky good show. Same writer from like Parks, I think, did that show. Um, and now I think they do like American Auto. Oh, yeah. I forgot about that. I got it. Well, that's what. We, we'll just go quick, quick TV tangent. That's what like the office idea originally was like. That's why it was called like uh, uh, it was something like. American stories, the office, like that's not right, but it was something along those lines. And their idea was like, we can kind of do this format for a lot of stuff. And then they did it with parks and did it with Superstore. So they kind of are actually sticking to their original idea. The good place, the good place. I mean, that's like on a whole other level of of writing that shows yeah nuts. um but yeah the silver scene track has like this freddy guy like rapping right off the start and then like the screams kick in and it's featuring silverstein not it doesn't say shane told so i wonder if like because nothing nowhere is just one guy if this track is just 
Silverstein doing the music. I mean, Shane's definitely screaming. Oh, so maybe I, that answers our buddy question. Maybe it's just Silverstein's like his, not Silverstein, since his fail is his background band. Yeah. On Misery Syndrome. But Misery Syndrome says featuring Buddy Buddy Nielsen, but then it says Census Fail underneath. Yeah, that's why I'm confused. The Silverstein track says featuring Silverstein, and then it says Silverstein underneath. So I have I have a lot of questions about this guy. But if we go on this Wage War tour, the Starland, we'll get to just see firsthand. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. But this album was a surprise. Also, um, it's nothing comma nowhere and i saw people abbreviating it as lowercase n comma capital n which i think is just really cool but that's not how it's formatted on spotify so i don't know if that's a fan thing or if i just saw one person do it either way just thought it was a cool abbreviation i love that a cool abbreviation cool. shout out a7x another good one <laughs> They've been all over the news. We can save that for later, though. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, if you're in the mood for or for heavy stuff, Nothing Nowhere and Invent Animate, I would put both of those on. Do you want to do get to Boy Genius now? You're going from heavy to heavy, uh, yeah, we're, a little lighter. Yeah, we're really doing a 180 here. but I'm getting deep in our feels here with uh, the new... the. I should say the debut full length album from Boy Genius. Yeah. So was is there, and it looked like they had an album before this, but was that just an EP or something, or what's that was the deal? an EP, like a six song EP. Okay. Which came out in twenty eighteen, I believe. Which feels like thirty yeah. years ago. <laughs> I remember it making waves because they're like a super group of killer female artists, and they're but... all yet they all have awesome solo careers, and they come together and make somehow even better music together which is pretty cool yeah um this album is called the record just the record which All is very things. on brand for the three yeah of them. boy genius the record is great um 12 songs 42 minutes i'll let you take this one away brett because you know way more about them than i do yeah so i'd say like my order goes like bb julian lucy as far as how much i like each of these artists I, I like all three of them but if i had to rank like ones i listen to the most would be in that order mm -hmm. but i got really into julian baker once like 2015 when she put out her first album it was like one of the most beautiful records i've ever heard they went out and bought the vinyl immediately it's like very like hard on her sleeve like really cut like lyrics that cut deep and I've been hooked on like, her music ever since. And then Phoebe Bridgers was around of that same time. But I really got into her in, during the pandemic when she put out Punisher. And Punisher was like far and away my album of the year that year. It's still one I go back to. And she's just a great like singer and artist. And then Lucy Dacus. I don't listen to as much as I should. But she also makes really great music. I know like I think it was Home. Is it Home Tapes? It's her last album. That was very good. Home, home, home video. Home video. There it is. But yeah, so like all three of them by themselves. And then when they come together to do Boy Genius, it's like a whole. It's kind of like the end of Power Rangers where like they all <laughs> kind of take out their. Uh... They morph. It was morphing time when the three of them come together, I should say. So. But I've been like spending a lot of time with this one this weekend. Uh, I like how like each track is like there's one singer leading the way with the others kind of in the background. And they all kind of take turns. But I think I do agree with you. I know we were talking offline about this, that the Julian Baker songs here are probably the strongest. Like uh, $20. Uh, uh, satanic. Sa Satanist. Satanist. Uh, Andy Curse. Yeah. Like those three were the probably the biggest home runs here. Although yeah. I think Lucy here was kind of like a breakout star for me. Like this was the most her music has grabbed me. Like a... Uh, we're in love, which is the incredibly pretty song. Yeah, all I wrote for that was "damn." Yeah, like it's like <laughs> like looking for love, like your lover in the next life, and I was like, oh my god, this is yeah way too deep for a Saturday driving down the Long Branch. But <laughs> <laughs> right, um, Leonard Cohen was really good too. I think that was also Lucy. That was her too. Yep, that was a good acoustic one. 
Yeah. Uh, she did True Blue, which I thought had like yep. some 90s like jingle rock riff. Yeah. Under it, and another like really pretty song. I do wish we got a little more of Phoebe here. Like I feel like there are hints of like what she can do, like, but it didn't come until like a letter to an old poet. Like we're like, because like I always looked at her lyrics like Cardi B. Like I'd hang on every word, not knowing the next thing I was gonna come out of her mouth because she has some like really clever wordplay in her songs. Like yes. I feel like we got some here. It's like you said my music is mellow. Maybe I'm just exhausted. <laughs> yeah, like that's yeah, like, like that's that her one. in a nutshell. But I feel like we didn't get that from her until like the very last song here. There was one I was, like, early a little on, disappointed. It was something like, like you told me where the North Star was, and I called you a liar or so- something oh, yeah. like that. I don't know. <laughs> It's like you it was, looked at us as we were equals when like clear like it's like I'm so much better something like that <laughs> it was on the song <laughs> yeah yeah I think she balances out because I feel like uh Julian Baker and Lucy like both bring a little bit of like maybe like grit to their mute like it just feels um like rawer and then more raw um and then like Phoebe comes in with like the really gentle, like clean vocals, almost like she's whispering sometimes. And I, I think it's like, it complements each other nicely. Cause if they yeah. were all doing the exact same thing, then it would just be like, I don't know. It'd be like Matt Skiba and, and um, Mark Hoppus, like just sharing yeah, the exact good, same comparison. voice. And it's like, this is cool, but like you need, you need Tom to like have that contrast. And I think the three of them share it specifically like Phoebe bringing that to the table. Yeah. Like I do think of like Emily, I'm sorry. And revolution zero would have fit really well with her with um, Punisher. Like as a part of those, that collection of songs, like they were good songs. It's just, I think the highs of like the Julian and Lucy tracks kind of, overshadowed her a little bit but she was still great yeah. here so it just shows like how good those songs were yeah revolution zero was kind of a skip for me it just like i don't know didn't break in the grab action me. i thought not strong enough had like cheryl crow vibes i might be just be thinking about cheryl crow a lot because she's going to be at sea here now and i've just been, be. spent spent all my time since then realizing how many songs cheryl crow has <laughs> It's a but, really big yeah, it gave me so like that like breezy power pop kind of vibe also um i found this fact that i thought it was pretty cool um cool about it it's kind of like simon and garfunkel vibes and paul simon is credited on the track that's interesting yeah All right shout out paul simon um but last one last yeah. note here though i'm not strong enough that i thought it was eat the help it was cool how all three of them had like equal parts in that one. And I think that that was a, like, I know we've talked a lot lately about bad singles being released, like with the Ben sevenfold and stuff, <laughs> but like, this was a perfect example of like a great single to put out there. They kind of showcased them doing what they're great at while also hinting at what's to come on the whole album. Yeah. So I thought they did a good job, like releasing that as a, the lead single. Yeah. That's a good, was a good choice. Cause they were all kind of equally involved on that one. I would love to have like when I follow along on the lyrics, if it could just like specifically tell me who's singing at times, because I think I would. I did text you, yeah. Appreciate it more. I was, yeah. I went into the the Reddit thread on Indie Heads, and then I would just control F song names as I was listening to them, and till I found a comment that like gave enough context. I mean, but after like the third song, because the first three all like kind of showcase a different it, it's like um each other turn yeah i think it's julian baker then then lucy then phoebe like phoebe's pretty around. easy to spot um and then yeah but just like when they're mixing it in from verse to verse because i think phoebe had a verse on satanist like the second one i want to say but i'm not i think that was another one where all three of them were involved it yeah, goes like from see, Julian so. to Phoebe then to Lucy. Yeah, which I would like. Maybe if maybe if I look on uh Genius, it might it'd probably say who's singing instead of just looking at the Spotify lyrics. But yeah, this was a nice album. I 
it's not necessarily like my go-to type of music but i i did enjoy it and i thought it was cool so so phoebe's on the taylor swift tour not the whole thing like certain dates i believe okay yeah because she's she's huge and she's also apparently very polarizing like i don't know if she just has like a really like rabid fan base and that's why it's just the internet being crazy but when i thought i was just gonna get into like reading a nice discussion about the album there was some like people have opinions on her it's it's nuts but i well, guess she's not when... afraid to speak her mind she's also the one that got ryan adams canceled oh because like, he was like like pretty much abusive towards her and they had like a brief relationship and she like talked to the new york times about it and that got him like oh wow that... in a ton of trouble and like he's still like his career is never going to be the same wow yeah i guess that'll certainly uh upset some people uh yeah i just i i knew she was big but i didn't realize that people were so opinionated on her it's interesting i love her though and she had like one of the best snl like live performances in years last year i'll have to check that Go out watch this is the end on okay. snl uh not not the movie with seth rogan and no <laughs> she might have got the title from that though <laughs> Um, so we have a smoother transition here than we did from Nothing Nowhere to Boy Genius, but this, that's for sure. <laughs> Boy Genius to City and Color, Dallas Green. Um, was definitely kind of in the same vein, at least uh, tempo wise. I think he had a little more, not more guitar, but different guitar. Like he worked in the the bluesy riffs and and stuff going on, whereas they were more straight up acoustic or like yeah. crunchy guitar more indie so city and color he this was another one you put on as i said earlier i didn't i didn't know much about this beforehand and you taught me where the name came from which i didn't even know so it's such a it's genius it's so cool <laughs> it makes so much sense um so this was called the love still held me near 12 songs 58 minutes what what'd you think, Brett? So quick side quick little story here. So I know like coming into this week, I told you like this was coming out, and there's a new Hold Steady album coming out called The Price of Process. So Friday I was at work. It's been kind of a stressful week. I put the Hold Steady album on, I got like halfway through, and like Craig Finn's like lyrics and vocals are very storytelling. Yeah. And like you kind of have to really listen hard to understand like what's going on. And like, it was such a crazy day Friday. I'm like, I, I can't do this right now. So then I put on <laughs> City and Color. And I was like, I hopefully like what's going on around me doesn't ruin this either. <laughs> and it just completely calmed me down. And I enjoy this album so much because like he could sing about literally anything. And it's going to put me in a good mood and relax me because like he's such a talented singer. And like he like even like, for example, like the song Fucked It Up, like he somehow manages to make the sounds of fucking up sound beautiful, <laughs> which is just shows like how talented he is and like why I love Alexis on fire so much because a lot of it's because of him and his like lyrics and vocals, I should say. Is he the but main just, vocalist for Alexis on fire? He's the clean vocalist. Okay. Got it. But that's what, like what wrote me in. Cause the, I, I know I've said this before, but like they don't have the greatest screamer, <laughs> but like he, his vocals just completely just blow the roof off. So did you that did you feel in contrast to hold steady? Did you feel like you didn't have to pay attention to what he was saying as much? Like it was more just like the musical vibes of it? Because I feel like he's also storytelling. He's storytelling too, but I feel like it's easier to get the story. Well, like Craig Finn, it's like, oh, it's out of the rabbit store in there. <laughs> <laughs> but then he'll slow down and he'll speed up. <laughs> And I don't even know what a rabbit story is or why I said that, but <laughs> no, you nailed it. And I'm gonna write a song about the rabbit story now. Like without the shop, I got me some peppers. <laughs> Wanted corn, but they only had peppers. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do this right now, so I'm gonna put on city and color. <laughs> and the whole steady are very good, but like you need to really be paying attention for a lot of their the way he sings. Like, that's why I'm really curious to see what you think, or if I'm just being harsh and maybe I'll just cranky because of work. 
No, you're you're right. Um, I felt like the whole steady, like I appreciate if you're gonna sing, speak like that, that he articulates very clearly. And this isn't me being old boomer man yelling at mumble rappers, but it happens with punk rock just as much. Where like I think there was a couple tracks on the bount latest Bouncing Souls album too, where I'll have it on full blast in my car. I'm like, I have no idea what this guy is saying. Like, <laughs> it's it's great music. It's fun. And it just happens with so many artists, sometimes too much where it'll like ruin an artist for me. But some songs, I just don't know what they're saying. And it, it takes away a little bit. So I did appreciate there was no questions about the words he was saying. Maybe there was questions about what a rabbit store is. But... <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, it felt like an entire like, you know, uh um the suicidal tendency song where he's like, All I wanted was a Pepsi. She wouldn't give it to me. The oh, one yeah, that yeah. Yeah, it's it is kind of like that. It felt like an entire album of that. Cause I, I didn't I didn't really know much about this band at all. And um A lot of the bands we like love the hold steady. Like get like Gaslight loves them and took them out on tour. Yeah, because uh, Parko goes to see them every December because they have like Brooklyn shows every December. Yeah, they're where they from play like Brooklyn. their albums in full. And they're not, they sound like a band that would have came up in like the 80s. And I think they started in like 2002. Yeah, which is crazy. <laughs> but yeah, they're a very wasn't... good band, but I just, I need to be in a certain mindset to enjoy that kind of storytelling. And I wasn't yeah. there on Friday. Honestly, like, I think I'm just not into like the storytelling stuff like even city in color like i enjoyed the guitar and everything but it's just like all right this is gonna sound this is gonna sound mean and i don't mean it to sound as aggressive as as it's gonna come off it's just kind of boring to me like it's just slow gentle singing there's moments of cool guitar and stuff but like i don't know when i would ever like choose to listen to it and that's not to say it wasn't it wasn't well done. Like I think he's a he's a good songwriter and the songs were good. And like it's not like I didn't enjoy like the water is coming was really cool. Like fucked it up. I had that one, yeah. It it was Bow Down to Love, Meant to Be was a good opener. Yeah. It it was like the songs were good. It just I don't know. Maybe I've just been in like a rut of just kind of craving heavy music. And this just isn't what I was after this particular week. Like, I'd like to revisit it maybe on like a rainy Monday morning or something. Like it might like kind of fit the vibe better. The, Cause sometimes, especially with this podcast, like, like you talked about it last week, sitting in traffic, listening to meet me at the altar or whatever it was that was going on. Yeah, it's away from it a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, it's just sometimes if the mood of the album doesn't match what you're in the mood for, then it kind of just doesn't work. But I did like, you know, the guitars were great. There was some really cool blues riffs, like just like chilling on in the background and stuff. It's good so. if you're like looking for something like to relax to or need something to just kind of calm, some calm music. That's what he's great for. Like, in all honesty, like I obviously listen to Alexis on Fire way more than city and color because my mood most of the time leans that way yeah but if i'm if it's like a rainy day or like i'm stressed over work or something i'll have no problem throwing a city and color album on just letting it play in the background and it right. does like just bring me down i'll helps. try that because like, that's been, kind of my go-to with city and color i've been stressed at work lately so when it hits this week i'll i'll put this on also i would like to say that i would like i would gladly see him live and stand and listen and take in these songs in a live setting and i think it would be a lot of fun and really cool to see you and i'd almost i'd person. almost like enjoy that more than listening to it on my own like i i think it would be fun to to really like have nothing else going on like i think if i just sat on the couch and put this album on and focus solely on it that it would be it would work better for me but like that's just i have like add like it's hard for me to just do that 
but if you're at a show like that's all you can yeah. do that's a good way to yeah. put it and, like he writes like really good like love songs too like the girl is like one of his biggest songs from like the late 2000s and like those oh, first wow. three albums i'd say if you want to kind of get more of a taste of city and color go listen to those three and then come check out this one then you kind of uh, have more context going into it of, like yeah. kind of the songs he writes and this the girl is like far and away more upbeat than anything that's on this album I feel like it's a big wedding song like people pick that one yeah uh, yeah he's got he's got a lot of music so i think i think i might just have to like explore all his stuff sometimes and, yeah listen to sometimes so in full it's that's when you're like holy shit this guy's an incredible singer all right sometimes i'll, I'll check that out sometimes shout out parko for showing me that <laughs> Shout out Parko. He'll be He's gonna be mad about what I said about the whole steady, but he'll appreciate that, <laughs> that part. He'll be on. What, we can ask him about it this week soon. when we talk yeah. about the national. Yeah. Yeah. Another one that kind of falls into the same like tempo. Yeah, I'm gonna have to kind of <laughs> I don't know if I should just wait for him to walk us through that or try to do some prep this week. Yeah, I might just I've been big on the this is playlist that Spotify gives you. That's so how I, I did the I screaming just, female dive. Yeah, I might just do that. Uh, was was that all the albums? Did we talk about all the albums in the entire world? I think we did a good job of summing up a, a crazy week. Yeah. Yeah, it was all over the place. Um, all right, I think we can get to some skip repeats and skip repeats, skip repeats, whatever. Mm-hmm. Tomato, potato, tomato, <laughs> tanaj, tanajo. <laughs> All right, skip repeats. Um, Brett, you want to kick it off? Sure. All right, let's do it. Let's get into All it. All right. I know you got a spicy one. <laughs> All right. So let me just preface this with. We'd love to have this person on the podcast, but he also may have big timed us when we tried. But still, we wouldn't mind having him on the podcast someday. But I have to say what I have to say here. So, Finn McKenty, who famous for his YouTube channel of uh, the punk rock NBA, makes some really interesting videos, has some spicy takes at times on certain things with the music that we love, but that kind of loops into this conversation. So he put out this mo- this just baffling tweet this week that caught my attention. I had to send it to Nick like immediately because it just blew my mind that someone that runs a YouTube channel can even have this thought when he talks about bands from yesterday and today. And he tweets out this, which is, and I quote, I'm trying to unpack why so many young people, parentheses, teenagers, are into 20 to 30 year old bands that are objectively too young, too young as in quotes, too young for. And he gives the examples of Deftones, My Chemical Romance, Green Day, etc. Why aren't they getting into new rock artists instead? What? Like, I feel like you said it best, first of all, that a lot of people, when they're discovering music, they'll be listening to older bands while listening to present day bands, like for using like myself as an example, like I was listening to like Led Zeppelin, The Who, uh, who else was in there? Like Black Sabbath, all of them while like discovering like Green Day, Three Days Grace, My Chemical Romance, all those bands at the same time. Like it's a normal thing to go back in time and appreciate bands that did it before that influenced the bands you're listening to today. And it's possible to listen to both at the same time. Like just because they're listening to Green Day doesn't mean they're not listening to like a day to remember or like modern bands but like you make youtube videos on like deftones and like avenge sevenfold and like other active bands so you should understand people are listening to everything like they're not not getting into new rock artists i just it just baffled me that like i don't know maybe i'm being too harsh but i just thought it was a really bad take yeah i think there's definitely like it's not one or the other um also like you're naming like legendary bands it's like asking why do 
like like you said it's like why do people now of all ages still listen to like led zeppelin or the beatles it's like because they made awesome music that yeah. still stands the test of time and i think you could make that argument for a lot of the bands you mentioned before like green day or my chem or whatever um yeah they're they're huge bands and they're not like i mean green day is kind of old i guess at this point but like anyone who started after like the 2000s is i guess it's been 20 years but like it's still relatively new also i oh well, this is this is gonna be weird because we do listen to a lot of stuff and like i just i don't know if you told me the name like new bands like what is a new band like is nothing nowhere is that a new band like it's technically right wait for maybe yeah like I, they've been around for like 10 years too yeah so i don't maybe the real question is like are there not no because there there are new bands like i think all right let me collect my thoughts here I think the real issue is that it's getting more difficult for bands to get to the level that Green Day or Blink or My Chem or even like Avenged was at it for a while. Like that ceiling doesn't really seem to exist anymore. Like you look at like some of the biggest like new pop punk bands around and it's like, like Hot Mulligan is huge as in the scene. Um Microwave is doing great. Like, but these bands are selling out like two thousand person venues, maybe. Like I which is which is awesome. But like it's not like they're selling out MetLife or something like Green Day would do. And I don't I don't think they ever will. And that's not a knock at it. It's just I don't it's where I rock know. is right now. I don't know how a band is supposed to get to that level anymore without like doing what Fallout Boy did, without going pop. That's accurate, probably. Because I mean, like, rock isn't what it used to be. Yeah. You know, I, like, people are going to those bands because like that's when like those bands are on top of the world. Like so many people love their music and still do. And like there's not really that kind of space anymore for one of these newer bands to explode in that way. Unless we see like yeah. some bands like Machine Gun Kelly or uh, oh no, I'm a, Olivia Rodrigo, like how they kind of brought, they put more eyes on pop punk and bands that came before. Yeah, like maybe that's an example of like a newer artist. But again, they're pulling like Def, like he again, Deftones, My Chemical Romance, Green Day. A lot of the bands around today were inspired by them. Like he answered the question in his question. <laughs> like people are listening to them because they're they inspire the bands today. Yeah. So it's just a normal thing to do. Just go back and see what inspired your favorite band and you might find another band you like. Like at at some point, my chem went from playing like Maxwell's in Hoboken, which is maybe like 200 people tops to, Prudential to selling out Prudential. How does, how does that happen? And can it still happen? I'm sure it can. I'm not on hiatus but, for 10 years. Yeah. Right. Like, is that like, I just don't know. I don't know how bands are supposed to supposed to do that anymore without like selling out. And it's not like, I mean, you can make argument for anyone, especially like to put green day in the conversation. I know they're very contentious with that, but like they didn't like sell out in terms of like changing their sound entirely to cater to that. And I, I don't know. I just, I I'm not entirely sure that young people aren't getting into new music as much as because Finn likes to say this a lot too, is that if you look at festivals, it's still tool guns and roses, Avenge sevenfold. Like it's, and I think that might be more like, it's a chicken or the egg. Maybe like, is it young people aren't listening to these bands? So they're not at the top of the festivals or they're not at the top of the festivals. So people aren't listening to them as much. I don't know, but I think that's a really good point that he he brings up a lot is just like, why is like the top festivals around right now, like 
Godsmack. That is a little like, weird. Yeah. And I do think there's room for both because, you know, there's multiple headliners, there's multiple nights. But I don't see any of these festivals really having new bands at the top. But I don't know what new bands there are that would be able to headline a festival. Like, and you got to pull just, in, like, people so of our confusing. age. Yeah. Like, and, like, our yeah. age wants wants that stuff. Because exactly. our age is who's spending money right now. So maybe that's a thing. Maybe when Gen Z is 10 years further down the line and they have jobs, and I mean, they probably are already making more money than all of us without going to college. That's another situation. Good for them. Good for the hustle. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know. I would love to see like a list of what young bands he's talking about that people aren't getting into because i don't yeah you i can't put that out there i can't name a bunch of young bands that i think could be in serious topics to headline festivals to even have the conversation about no i don't know it's interesting yeah. though like where what is the state of rock music and what is the ceiling and is there room for these bands to reach levels of tool or green day or yeah. whatever maybe that's more the question like why aren't bands getting to that level of popularity but i just think it was just the wrong idea to assume that people aren't listening to new music while they while also going back to the legends that came before like most people discover music by doing both yeah yeah and i i, I think he knows that i hope so Part of maybe the... I, maybe I just like reacted too strong to that tweet, but <laughs> oh well, it it brings up a good question and it got us to a good discussion. So it is interesting to think about. But I mean, he he makes a living talking about music. I he's he knows that people. What was how was it exactly phrased? Not to just like rehash everything, but he said, "Why aren't young? Why are young people listening to old stuff and not new stuff?" He's like, why, why so many, why do so many young people, parentheses teenagers, why are they into 20 or 30 year old bands that they're objectively too young for? Why aren't they getting into new rock artists instead? All right. Yeah. Yeah. I think what, what you said is that's something that's been going on for forever, forever. And it yeah. doesn't mean they're not also getting into new stuff. If we no. wanted to just take it super literally, I think. That's I was a... doing Nirvana and the Foo Fighters at the same time. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And it's nothing wrong yeah. with that. I was doing Beatles and Say Anything. Was, yeah. Was and Mac Miller. And that Pink was Floyd. like my junior year of college. Was I was really big into those three. Which and is, Pink Floyd for you too, right? Yeah. Yeah, man. That when everyone like I think most people, especially into rock, hit that phase where they discover like classic rock. And it's like you it's think addicting. like you think you found this like big secret, and then like you look back and realize like no, like no, everyone knows you're you're band. not like you didn't unearth some like crazy thing by listening to like Zeppelin too. <laughs> but man, when you hear it for the first time and and get into that, it's such a fun little it's a rush. rush. Yeah. Um. All right. So that was that was your that was skip, skip. I'm guessing. All right. So what what do you got on repeat? We hinted at this before, but we finally got Stoked for Summer announced. And we're going, and the lineup is spectacular. So we have Bouncing Souls, Bayside, Seven Seconds, who I never heard of before. Yeah, I don't know them. Screaming Females. And there was one other that I'm blanking on right now. Man, that's a Jersey loaded show. I know Bayside's New York, but whatever. Tri State area in the house. <laughs> but tickets are purchased. We're in. It's middle July. I can't wait. Yes. We locked down a summer stage show. It's going to be so good. I've been binging bouncing souls and um, I'll just lump my repeat into this. I cannot stop listening to Bayside. Like if, if this podcast and what we listen to is a, is a brick wall. Bayside is the water that I just pour down all the cracks. Like anytime it's not something that we need to be listening to, I've just been Bayside-ing yep. nonstop. 
and it's yeah this show is going to be great i've never been to a stoke for summer i know i think they celebrated 20 years like last year a couple of years ago so they've been doing this for a while bouncing souls are a, a huge presence in the jersey scene and they have a crazy devoted following and we're coming in we're coming in late we're we're fresh fresh young ears to the party and i couldn't be more excited i heard that like lauren was telling me as like stoked for summer like takes over asbury for like the weekend she said there's gonna be after parties announced there's gonna be shows at house of independence the night before get announced like it just it sweeps the town so there's gonna be more stuff and who knows like what bands might come through and play smaller venues uh, i'm excited now yeah yeah i'm it's, stoked for summer as you might say hell yeah um i've been i've been trying to get back into guitar um world of warcraft has grown tiring for me i always go through a few months phase when they put new stuff out and now i need a hobby that's more I don't know, something else and i haven't been playing my guitar a lot so i'm like how can i actually try and progress at guitar instead of just picking it up and playing the same 15 songs i've been playing for 20 years and i think bayside is the answer and it's so funny because i was so like high on this idea i'm like i'm gonna pick like bayside songs and like i'm just gonna like not stop until i have it like fully fleshed out even if that takes me two weeks to a month and this is how i think i can get better at guitar so i put on like bayside playlist and the walking wounded comes on and i'm like all right like damn it -na 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 -na. like i can do that i can i can learn that and play it to speed and i'm listening along to the song so far so good like this is totally doable and then it gets to the solo <laughs> the solo in that song is so ridiculous that i'm like all right just go back to the liquid a2 album where you belong because this is never gonna happen <laughs> like just play some bouncing soul just, songs that's yeah i gotta find i mean there i think there's other bayside songs that i can certainly learn all the way through the walking wounded is not one of them yet but like where is it put that yeah all right put that song on we're we're doing like roadmaps again but put that song on and skip to 205 and listen to the solo and, and try to imagine like you playing guitar and yeah yeah it's walking wounded it's, you said right the yeah song? yeah <laughs> it is self-titled song I, I have a playlist going right now of any time i hear an insane jack o'shea solo that i'm just putting it on there and i want to just try and like collect all the good solos because not every bayside song has a solo and i listen to a lot of them hoping that it comes and it's not always the case so i just want to have like a jack o'shea playlist but they are so so good i know we've had this it even after roadmaps after having this conversation before i still put them on and just like i i don't know why it just keeps taking me so long to accept how good they are like they they have that 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 emo itch or whatever you want to call it, but they are a friggin' rock metal band at their core. <laughs> Just yeah, I I this is the summer of Bayside. Better late than never, though. And Frank did yeah. a good job road mapping since we're both kind of yeah newly brushed to them. Great job. Thing. If if you didn't listen to that, go back to the the road map episode for Bayside because it. It was a good one and it man they're just so good they're so good so i hope eventually i can play the walking wounded on guitar but that is not where i'll be starting but yeah i got bayside on repeat big time also i mentioned the fiddler ep earlier called that's life um it's like five songs um it's aggressive it's fast it's angry they talk about drugs on like every track which <laughs> i don't know whatever works for them they have one they have one line that says i'm not on drugs but i have drugs on me <laughs> i don't know so that was funny um it's just they have a song called fsu which is just fuck shit up um it's just fun hard music i think i saw them once at like 
uh, Gov Ball or something. I don't like listen to them a whole lot, but this EP is just it goes hard. So I so wanted to, to shout it out. out. Um, my skip. I think I'm gonna give it to the new All Time Low album. People seem to really like it. It just didn't really do it for me. It, I don't know what kind of band they're supposed to be. And I think that's the problem. And I was never like a huge all time low fan. So like, it's not, it's not like they're a band I've always listened to that suddenly put out an album I don't love, but people just seem really high on it. And I feel like I'm missing something, but maybe this is kind of goes back to what we were talking about where you lean a little poppier and that's what might help you like get, I don't know if they're at an arena level or not. Like, do you think they could play like Prudential? It'd be close. I know they right. have a, a, like a shit ton of fans. Yeah. I've never, I've never been able to get into them either. Like yeah. I did enjoy their last one that came out, like right in the middle of the pandemic, but I don't know if that's because I was like looking for something as like a pick me up. With like everything yeah. going on, and like that's what that one provided. Like it wasn't that a really was good summer album. W- wake up, one. sunshine. Wake up, sunshine. Yeah, still that a, was pretty like, good. Still my a good friend, summer album. My friend was into it. Also, someone told me to check out "Don't Panic," and that one was pretty good. They have a song with Anthony Ranieri, and uh, that's probably a good song, man. Yeah, that has more like four year strong vibes. So that's "Don't uh, Panic." Yeah, um, "So Long Soldier," it's good. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I never been like huge all time low fan, but they, I bet I could put together a playlist of 20 songs that I probably like. I just don't know that much would come from this newest album. I would love to talk to someone who likes it and hear, hear what they like about it. That would be a good roadmap well, for someone to do with us. Yeah. Or like, um, now we're brainstorming on the pod, but like a roadmap roadmap shorts like just pick an album and have someone come on and tell us why they like it Uh, i'd be all for that that'd be kind of fun do we have anything else for this week um i know we're gonna bump storyteller me and brett both have like a chapter left so and this has been we had a lot going on this week so we figured we'd just save it so we're gonna finish that up next time um, I think that's pretty much it for this week. Um, speaking so. of speaking of Finn and the punk rock NBA, he had M Shadows on from Avenged. Um, really great interview. Which would recommend checking that out. It got into a lot. And then, as always, they talked about Ronnie for a little bit because And that's what made the news. Yeah, that's what gets picked up by all the headlines, but that's that's kind of how it works. So just the name of the game. But a lot of headlines from just that, like, seven minutes on Ronnie. But, yeah, uh, real interesting stuff, just hearing how Avenged came up and, and their decisions behind stuff and new directions. and And they did, like, a bunch of, like, NFT treasure hunt thing for, like, I don't know if it was for the stage or if it was to tease the new stuff coming out. But he was just talking about how to like how to engage fans and and just make things exciting. Uh it was a good interview. It's it's worth the uh, like 45 minutes to an hour. Uh yeah. What else what else we got going on? What's coming up? I think we finally got that Lincoln Park anniversary this week, Meteora. Comes out Friday. Hell yeah. The 20th anniversary. Yep. Oh, that's great. I'm so excited for that. So that's all I had for... So I think it should be a lighter release week, hopefully. Yeah. I'm sure we'll dig up some more, but... Yeah, we'll be able to... I mean, if they release that, like how they did Hybrid Theory, I'm sure we're going to have plenty to talk about from it, which is exciting. Um. Yeah, we're having pretty some... much like releasing six new albums, probably. So yeah, we're having some friends on soon. Um, our friend Brian Colburn from uh, formerly Playlist Wars, now he has one called My Weekly Mixtape. Um, he'll be joining us in 
I don't I think next week maybe is when we'll put it out. But um look forward to that. Check out his podcast, my weekly mixtape. Um we're also gonna have friend of the pod Nick Parko on to do a roadmap for the national, who I know absolutely nothing about. So this will be a a real roadmap and we'll see. We'll see if he gets us into them or not. Frank Frank is the only one so far. I mean like Matt didn't have to do much convincing. Like he knows we love Silverstein as much as he does. Yeah. But I think Parker's got his work cut out for him with this one. But we'll, we'll see. I yeah. have faith in him. Yeah. Yeah. Cause Bayside was, I mean, you throw killer solos and guitar. It's not going to take much. No. The national, I think I'm going to need some, some context to like really get into. Cause from what I heard, it's just kind of. A little that, lighter. Yeah. That lighter. I don't know. It's just like that. That tempo, the city and color tempo from that they're out like that tempo just gives me struggles to Sleepy stick to. Vibes. Yeah. But we'll see. We'll see. It'll be fun. Um yeah. I think that's gonna do it for this week. Thank you everyone for listening. We love you very much. And we'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.